Hunter x Hunter episode 90. Damn, 90, it's crazy. Oh yes, our lovely, gentle, warm, loving knuckle. Huge of going to even acknowledge that or recognize that in the heat of the moment. On the topic of trying to wrench as much personal agency as possible, which involves the ability to see things at the clearest possible level while also fostering the greatest possible ability to choose one's reaction to situations, which I think is very related to Nen, you know, that self-discovery and personal control over one's sort of energy and aura. I was thinking about how there are so many possible layers of possibility to one's reaction to things. From experience, I think it's really easy to get snared on on something like the first level, which is an automatic emotional response that causes knee-jerk reactions. But there's so much more beyond that. There's so much more to consider. And it's almost inevitable in those situations if you go down that road. Later, there's a feeling of being like unclean. Like I didn't handle that the way I would have handled that if I could go back. Very hard to have that presence of mind in an actual moment of tension. I thought about this because recently at my second job, I encountered a situation that I believe to be extremely unfair and disrespectful. And what I was grateful for after the fact was that while I certainly did experience that rush of emotions. I think those gave way to conscious choices about how I wanted to handle the situation. And there was a bit of a heated exchange, let's say, but I didn't feel after the fact as though I had crossed any of my own personal ethical lines. On the contrary, I think it would have crossed my own personal ethical boundaries had I not done what I did. But upon reflection, I was thinking there's one thing that feels a little bit unclean about the interaction, and that was that there was another worker present who likely had to bear the brunt of the, <laughs> the fallout. And I'm like, ah, I didn't process that because I was so wrapped up in what was not the highest level of analysis and personal choice. I was a little bit compromised still by things like anxiety about how the situation would play out. And so I was thinking, man, there's just so many layers to it. There's just so far that can go. A lot of the layers that would have otherwise been sticky with practice become superfluous. They're redundant and can be deleted. They're not even considered. I definitely think it's uh, get another one of those. Look at the moon, not the finger pointing to the moon situations. You know, what is the ultimate goal? What do you really want? What do other people really want? What is the course of action that gives you the highest level of personal self-respect? and like which part of you is doing the talking. Interest X and X curse. So much at stake here. I think the, the biggest point of investment for me here, aside from the whole ant journey, Kalua, man. Yeah, I got a lot to think about, for sure. Can't we all go? <laughs> uh, well. I don't know. Knuckle doesn't have plot armor, so maybe he should stay here. <laughs> Where is... Okay, they're just going off into the woods. Wow, he's ripped too? I mean, it makes sense. If it's a power contest, he can toy with me. If it's a mental contest, he can toy with me. First comes rock! <laughs> oh man, that'd be so awesome. It's like when you, you fight your friends in fighting games or video games and you're a little bit above them. Or maybe even not, maybe you're just crazy. And you're like, I'm gonna finish you off with this super move, one way or the other. That's how it feels watching Gon. How many meters is that? Okay. Gon sensing the punch with his face, but minimizing the damage. Oh no, he, he's learning mid-battle again. Give him enough time, he'll figure it out. Hello? Oh, hi. For what? Oh, this is this is so sweet and so sticky. Oh, maybe it's not so magnanimous. What is the in what is the interest? It's not money. I alone lose when it reaches the heavens. Chapter 7 of bankruptcy. I declare bank bankruptcy? I was literally about to say we haven't even seen Knuckles attacks. He's just been like punching. Going trying to punch his debt away. You can't punch your debt, unfortunately. Yeah, what is this? This is a what is this? what is the APR in this thing? This okay, we did not plan for this. This is the most devious enemy loans. Some famous person once said compound interest is the most dangerous, powerful force in the universe. Dangerous and it works against you, I guess. That makes Knuckle the most powerful man in the universe. And while you're trying to sort out your debt, you get punched in the face. 
It's compounding. Those punches give aura. Damage gives aura. Those numbers mean you're broke. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm guessing there's gonna be an aura payday, at which point you're completely sapped. Gon is probably get moving. Wow, maybe Gon and Knuckle have a similar strategy where they rely on the opponent waiting for them to finish shouting about their technique. No one said there was going to be math. That's a lot of aura. How would you feel if someone, I mean, we don't have Nan, but someone can read you with this amount of numerical accuracy and all your flaws. Like they tell you how much of a loser you are with numbers. You went out to the bar to meet girls and your charisma was a zero. <laughs> you tried to apply yourself to a new task, but your IQ is four. Go was imagining the way this fight would go and this was not it. And it was not it for me either. We have introduced power levels to Hunter x Hunter. Wow. Going defeated by math. That's what I'm saying. I made that joke about Knuckles beating him with intelligence. Whoa, there we are. And interest is still accumulating. Equals your POP. But the trade-off, the sacrifice is that it temporarily gives him a boost. And the debt is getting pretty high. Yeah, well, you're, you're almost at your limit. You're one- wait, what? Aren't you just one take away from being at the limit? Didn't they say, uh, 1800? Compound interest. Wow, teaching him how to be a good fighter and accounting at the same time. Isn't this it? Isn't it? Maybe I misheard. Oh, okay. At this point, all he has to do is evade. And interest will take care of itself. Damn, that's painful. Bankruptcy. That sucks. Like it's better than death, which is what I was half expecting. First comes right there. <laughs> Knuckle Man, just a great guy. I really want to know how many kids in Japan or elsewhere learned about compound interest from Hunter x Hunter. How many financial lives did this show save? Like. <laughs> for all the wonderful lessons about life and being a good person and Nana as a human spirit and rising to take on a challenge and fostering a spirit of adventure. Maybe the best thing it ever did was teaching people to avoid credit card debt. There's gotta be at least one person out there, right? Speaking of legacy and the good you do in the world, there's a little bit of irony in it for me because while I was aware of the principle of compound interest long before this, what really made it seem enticing and fun was the game Yakuza 0 with the real estate minigame. That gave me an emotional connection to it. And like Knuckle is kind of a Yakuza-ish archetype. Yeah, there it is. That's the presence of mind. That was awesome. This is also a little bit of like letting Gon have a chance here. Shut up! This is annoying. Oh, that's a lot of debt! So fast! That's how that goes. That's how that feels. <laughs> the fear. That's higher than I thought. Wait, wait, I think the, the... What exactly is the increment period here? I think the bank is just winging it as they go. I think one of the reasons why Gordon and Knuckle work so well is because there are certain things about them that are, are very much alike. They both have big personalities, they're both somewhat hot-headed, but in this task, they're both aiming for what they each think is the highest form of victory. This is no longer really about the piece that they need to complete this one task. There are a bunch of ways to look at what that is, but the way I would like to think about it, or the way that it would make it relatable to something I really believe or want to believe, is that a lot of the time, the highest form of victory is not the result in your situation, but in the way 
way you think about yourself and how you walk away feeling, how well you've lived up to or exceeded your own expectations, which is partly based on how good you are at accurately seeing yourself and knowing who you want to become. Gon has talked to great lengths about what this means to him. I think Knuckle is following an innate calling to do good for someone he sees potential in and respects. And that is for Gon, of course, but critically that's for Knuckle and his vision of himself in that way that's the best kind of selfishness. Oh, it kind of... Oh, man, I really want to see what happens to Kalua. I'm very invested in this plot. But it does sort of hurt at this moment to cut away from Gon and Knuckle, who are going through some really interesting things. Off the bat, I can also think of ways that they might be very similar. This guy's known to be fearful, and uh, Kalua's emotional entry point into this segment is fear. That's an interesting aura. That was the plan. That's very interesting. Something is missing there. I'm so suspicious of this because you think that him revealing he doesn't want to hurt anyone might cut against him, but it's Nen and it's Hunter Hunter, so there's a ton of deception. Though it seems sincere. You could also take it as though he's just really dedicated to doing this, no matter what his qualms. Yeah, that's what drew my attention. It's a lot of information that could be used as a distraction. I wonder if at some point he'll combine yo-yos and electricity. This guy has no poker face. He's fast. Right, right. Oh, this is very relevant considering that it cut to him. Yeah, yeah. Your instinct is to retreat. That's a lot of, yeah, it's a lot of programming to overcome. It goes deep. He's stuck. He's overthinking. He needs to practice being in this state a lot. They're both overthinkers. <laughs> They're a lot of like. The level of respect in these two two pairs it ended up being a really wholesome exercise. Bye. The body retreats, the spirit does not. Body retreats, the spirit does not. Running physically is okay. The very person he's flashing to right now. Yeah, there you go. This is what I think Bisu was going for, pushing him past the brink. That'll do it. This sounds weird, but well, this is not the best way. It is a way where things kind of take care of themselves. If there's a fear that's leading to paralysis and inaction or fleeing, there are a lot of really robust, healthy ways to cope with that. One kind of automatic one, it's a little bit risky, but maybe a shortcut there, is when the fear of not facing it, for whatever reason, becomes bigger than the fear of the thing itself, that can be a really powerful force. And I think Gon is more afraid of failing Gon in this case than he has that automatic fear from all his conditioning from his brother. Oh, that was what that ripple was. It's lost signal. <laughs> this guy's so funny. They both need the same lesson. I think that this can be a gift for Kalua. It's not that these things are wrong or bad. It's not that fleeing is bad. It's not that survival is bad. It's connected to a lot of the stuff that I have been thinking this episode from the beginning, which is about the ability to consciously choose your tools and your reaction as opposed to being dictated by just a raw flowing state. All these elements that Kalua is struggling with or fighting against can be great assets in the right context when consciously chosen. This is such a broad life thing too. In so many areas of life, what we receive is a default sort of dumbed down, simplified package. Like in this situation, you always do this. The reason there's not enough nuance is because you can't drive home the full picture both quickly and accurately to someone to avoid them from harming themselves or coming into great danger. So before they're ready to fully comprehend the thing, you give them a very simplified version of the thing that is not optimal, but at least keeps them from total destruction. For kids, for example, take rules, right? Like you never do this ever. It's because since kids don't have a large depth of experience to draw on and don't understand the full danger, the first mission is to keep them safe. Then as you get older, you have better faculties. You can start to question those rules as absolutes 
and find healthy, optimal exceptions. And in fact, there are many situations where breaking the rules is exactly the right thing to do. Kalua questioning these childhood elements in himself right now is it, like a very, very human journey from childhood to adulthood. <laughs> Speaking of ignoring the superfluous. No pressure. <laughs> Why does this remind me of Deku? <laughs> Just the posture. I, I made a comment earlier about Shoot being busy defeating himself. Well... He didn't know that before the electricity. Ooh, dark. Bleak! Oh yeah, the ants. <laughs> What's the danger here again? The way my thoughts about what matters in this arc zigzag back and forth. <laughs> Oh, good. Ew. La la la. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. This is not, it doesn't fit. This is not how I feel. Speaking of My Hero Academia, it's like doo 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 if nothing good happened ever. <laughs> There's no playful romps through the mall this time. Jokes aside, being an outside observer, I think this is positive for both Gon and Kalua. They're fighting their own demons. Gon encountering a situation that he can't overpower with sheer will. Kalua encountering a situation he can't necessarily think himself through logically. In a tense situation that evokes fear or panic or whatever, like I was saying, you spring to that default position. That's the sticky level. That's mostly what people operate on. How do you overcome that? That's a really difficult question. And there's no one size fits all tried and true, 100% accurate method, but I think there are a few tools. One is something like a meditative process, which really at its essence is building a, a wall between your knee-jerk reactions and your higher cognition. The more you practice trying to be an objective observer of the things that naturally come up, your thoughts, your emotions, the more clearly you can see them and the more power you have to question them and therefore the more power you have to have a little bit of a healthy distance so that you can choose what you want to do with them. And that takes a lot of time and energy. It's not something you can do overnight for a task. That's a long road. The other maybe is through action. I think if you expose yourself to a fear in ways that are non-lethal, non-damaging, incrementally, you can work your way up through them to the point where they don't evoke that natural emotional response in the first place. I think there's a great and maybe easy to understand example with that kind of thing and social anxiety. Anybody who has social anxiety knows that in the moments of solitude, when you're thinking about your social interactions, you you imagine all the ways that you can act better and perform better and be charismatic, be cool, what have you. But without practice, the second you step into a social situation that's somewhat stressful, all of that goes out the window and you just go into panic and then you're back to like the original behaviors that you exhibited that you, you so detest in yourself. Alternatively, you can set very small sub goals. Like I'm going to talk to one person about something very simple for 30 seconds. And then, you know, hopefully that goes well and <laughs> there's no rebuke and you're like, that wasn't so bad. And, you know, maybe do that a hundred times. I don't know. And then gradually step that up. It's not that dissimilar ultimately from something like weight training. Basically having a lot of faith in Klua, I think because of the time limit, she didn't do this, but what would have been optimal is like <laughs> easing him into this instead of throwing him into this super high stakes, again, potentially life or death situation where he has to figure it out all at once. I think another thing about coping with these long formed habits that no longer are useful or are detrimental is really understanding what exactly they are. There are probably things that emerged from that young age I mentioned where you don't have the full comprehension or awareness of the nuance of life that were a shortcut you created as an absolute rule to keep you safe. It actually is something really special and beautiful. It's the way you, your, your psyche, protects yourself and keeps yourself safe by avoiding potential game over events at the expense of optimal living. It's kind of like fire in the sense that it has so many important practical uses that can dramatically improve your life, but you get burned by fire as a kid and you're like, fire hot avoid. That's because the negative element of fire is death, and that is so much more severe than the potential benefits such as light and cooked food. Those emotions are no different. I think the way most of us experience it in, in daily life, living in relatively safe societies, is socially. There probably was a time at some point in our history where social failure meant death. So that is an instinct from deep within yourself, protecting yourself. And so, as terrible as it is, as detestable as some of these qualities are, you know, Kalua hating himself for the way he's acting right now, there's some gratitude to be had for them. The 
next step, though, is realizing that those no longer apply. They, they no longer are useful. We will not die from having a socially embarrassing moment. Being rejected by a romantic interest does not mean the end of our DNA lineage, etc., etc. That whole exercise, that whole realm of thought is itself a meditation into one's own instincts and how one wants to react. It's like, thank you for that. I hear what you're saying, but I can still choose how I want to act in this situation. Just that, just like one time of having that is the start of this really great journey. <laughs>